How are we doing? I can't believe I got to read in the home stadium of the New York Jets. The new museum, home of the New York Jets. Yes. Who's feeling fucked up? Who's ready to kill? Who would possibly, they haven't ruled out killing somebody tonight. Hands in the air. It's always possible when you live on the edge. When you are the edge liver. That's what they call me. I'm lying. Okay. Now, as you've seen, my videos are beautifully installed in the museum. It was a great idea <laughs> for them to install my videos. And it has been a success. And if you approach the bathroom, I am hollering throughout the hall. And um, the another thing that was great was I was here on the opening night earlier this week, and I was taking pictures of my video in the hall, and one of the security people told me, no video, no video. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm just taking pictures. Um, but I already had the video file. But it's another thing though the context of the museum is valuable I couldn't steal that I couldn't take that video also it's on YouTube <laughs> but this okay so I'm gonna read from this book which you know about um, it's truly fantastic and I'll tell you more about it but this first story that I'm gonna read is called the correct name for a bunch of bananas is a hand and a single banana is called a finger Sarah was one year old. Little baby. Wah, wah. <laughs> Too bad for her. I'm older. I'm 14. I'm 14 and four months. I was born during a meteor shower, and it shows in my personality. Wah, wah. Cry about it. Take it to the bank. See if they can cash it for you. I was born during a meteor shower, and it shows in daily life. Anyhow, Sarah grew up eventually. She turned 13. Then she got into a 13 going on 30 type thing, and she was even older ages. Eventually, she grew to the age of, get this, 35. Wow. More weird stuff happened. Blah, blah, whatever. Then she was 50. Corn grew. Trucks drove with corn all over the world. Trucks drove with soybeans. Trucks drove with natural gas, coffee beans, cow manure. Global warming got worse. Sarah turned 60. People suffered. Hurricanes. Gazelles ran. Gazelles drank water. Lions ate gazelles. Some of the gazelles got away for a while. The sky went from dark to light and back to dark over 12,000 times. Sarah was alive. Sarah was alive and it was beautiful and hard. Sarah got away for a while. Then Sarah was 90 or something. Then Sarah was dead. Sarah was dead and it was beautiful and hard. Sarah got away for a long time then. The end. Yeah. Whoop, 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 whoop. Welcome home! Who here is uh, home currently and wasn't here? <laughs> yeah, a few of you. Welcome home to those for who that is the case. And to all you else, fuck you. But also, it's lovingly. It is passionate and it's just so beautiful to be on this earth that is so tragic. And this... This next story is called, I Want to Have Sex with Will Smith Watching. <laughs> Who here has thought of that? <laughs> A couple. I thought so. I figured this, I'm going for relatable titles on these stories. I'm like, what do, what's the zeitgeist? And I thought about that. Hap I thought about, well, wanting to have Will Smith, Will Smith watch you have sex. That's the zeitgeist. And the other, because I couldn't decide between Will Smith or Tony Hawk, who would be the more preferable person. Can we get a show of hands? 
Uh, think about it for just a second, whether you'd rather have Will Smith or Tony Hawk watching you have sex. You don't have to answer, but it's preferable that you do answer one or the other. And now let's see for Will Smith. And I think that'll be me. Uh, okay, now let's see Tony Hawk. <laughs> okay, now Tony D Hawk did land the 900. Does any, is anybody considering that? Now, Will Smith was also the star of Men in Black 1, 2, and 3 with co-stars. Um, Will Smith is, I like Will Smith's, um, you know, I, <clears throat> I don't know. I like something about Will Smith that I can't put my finger on. I really love watching iRobot, and I will watch it more times in my life. But <laughs> Will Smith is truly, he is truly capitalist, though. I have come to grips with this <laughs> because he truly does, he truly loves meritocracy. And he will tell you all about it. I think actually when this is a serious topic now, um, it wasn't <laughs> very serious, but it's actually true though, because uh, I because I have this positive messages in my work, right? And so I have to think now. I'm like, wait, what is the underlying message behind the message? What is the what are the the uh, what is my you know what is going on basically and so I was thinking about Will Smith though and I was thinking about Will Smith because he's very inspirational but he's very inspirational in a very capitalist way I realized this because it, did, you, did anybody hear this when Barack Obama I heard this second from somebody else but they said that Will Smith said this but I heard that when Barack Obama got elected Will Smith was like oh I love that because now nobody has an excuse and it's like, well, just because there's a black president doesn't mean that it's easier for all black people to succeed in the society and all over. You know what I'm saying? And so Will Smith is like perpetuating that myth. But also Will Smith is like very, um, he's very much like, I love his work ethic because he's all like, I love working hard, uh, very hard. But, um but he does it in such a way that I think it maybe leaves open this interpretation that if you don't succeed, then it's your fault for not working hard enough. It's the, and that's, what, that's, a, that's an idea that is very important to capitalism functioning because if we, if we honestly believe that the poor people are poor because they didn't work hard enough, then we won't be mad that they're poor. We'll be like, oh, well, that's what they deserve, and the rich people deserve it because they worked hard for it. it but, you know, so Will Smith is sort of not to say that he's at the root of the problem, not to say that he's the, he's the genesis of it all, but it just got me thinking about that. And so I want to, this one is called, I want, this one is called, I want to have sex with Will Smith watching. And it's a, <laughs> hi Merle, you're looking hot as heck today, good dog. That is what Michael said today when he woke up in life to see his cute and sexy dog Merle bear it all on national TV. What a nice day to be alive. Michael pours a hot cup of coffee into his bed sheets. There is no point to be calm about life, Michael thinks now. There is absolutely no reason. Just go buck wild most of the time, hee <laughs> hee. That is Michael's thought process now. But there's a backstory of how this happened. Well, Merle was at a 100% gluten-free grocery store once to buy loaves of non-GMO rice bread. This is the dog at the store. If you haven't been paying attention to the names. A wizard approached Merle with a gun and said, choose your destiny. Merle said without any pause at all, quote, I wish to be a stripper on cable TV. The wizard says, that's not what I meant. Also, I'm not a wizard. I'm just a guy who's robbing you. But then Michael stepped out from behind a tall pile of bread holding a sword. Wait one second, Michael says attempting to save Merle's life. The robber says, who in heck are you? Michael says, I'm God's child. And then a gamma ray burst coming from light years away happens to hit the earth directly. And suddenly everything is on fire and everyone is screaming. And within one minute, everyone on earth is dead. The end. Now a couple, thing, a couple postscripts on this. Beautiful story about Will Smith. Now, um, 
you notice the titles do not have any connection to the stories. Or do they? It's, it's open. It's an open text. We can read these things how we like. In fact, do whatever you please with this book. It's very optional that you do any particular thing with this book. Anyway, um, scholars are going bonkers over this text because, uh, because a couple things happen in it. One, uh, one thing is that uh, uh, everybody on earth dies in a flashback. And this creates a very tricky situation. How do, we get, how do we get to the present if everybody died in the past? This is a very confusing. That's what scholars like. They like a little bit of confusion. They're like, wait, I don't know. I cannot read this text correctly. I don't understand. I don't get it. And this is really great for scholars. So they do like this text very much. It's one, it's one of their favorite texts currently. But another big thing that really dazzles and, and, and truly dazzles these scholars and dazzles them is uh, this pun halfway through. Did anybody notice the pun, the dog pun? It was uh, Merle was in the grocery store, and Merle said without any pause at all. And now that truly... That's what the real level that scholars are really scared about, and can, they really go nuts. Wow, truly. Um, <laughs> uh, so that was really good. Now, the other thing that I just want to say is that who here knows about gamma ray bursts? Not many. Um, and I don't know that much about them. I need to learn up a little bit more. But uh, I do want to just, I, spread, I like to spread awareness about gamma ray bursts because they do have the power to truly kill all life. Um, they, come from a, they come from a far distance away throughout the universe, and they never have hit Earth, you know. But they are these powerful beams. I don't know what they are. But they, if I heard this, I heard this, if they do, act, if, if one ever does hit Earth directly, uh, we will be fucked up because it will, everybody will die. Um, and it'll be pretty much pretty instant that everyone will die. So that's just like a little bonus for going through life that we don't know. Like, hmm, gamma ray bursts today. We could like, you know, ah, you know what's going on tonight? Well, could be a gamma ray burst that kills everybody. And you know, there's many ways that we could die in any given day. You know, the American sniper guy could snipe us. And, or somebody else could snipe us. Um, and many other problems. We could get hit by a bus. Who here has gotten hit by one? Most of the, some people who do don't live. So that's another thing that we really got to consider. Um, hold on. I do have to hydrate. Oh. Because I'm sick. Uh, nice. So this story is called, I Can Probably Get a Horse to Kill Me. Once upon a time, there was Shanna. Shanna was a practicer, practicer of dark and evil Satanism. Well, the weird thing about Shanna is that she built completely Satanist fucking dirt bikes. Hmm, okay, you may ask... What does that even mean? What is even a difference between a Christian motocross versus satanic motocross? How do you even know if you're hailing Satan with your bike? How do you really know? Well, Shanna was a postmodern motorcycle mechanic. Her work on motorcycles raised these questions without necessarily answering them. Okay, <laughs> well, one day God came into Shanna's auto garage. God said, okay, Shanna, I see you have talent like none other. Even though you make satanic ATVs and off-roading vehicles, I just gotta ask that you build a divine and Christian jet ski for me and my friends. Can you please? I have unlimited money and also everything else. Shanna said, heck no, I hail Satan only, hee hee. The end. 
Just kidding, that's not over. God said, hmm, what if I make Vin Diesel your husband and life love? Shanna said, no way. I only love Vin Diesel as a friend. That's gross. God said, you're weird. Then Shanna said, okay, never mind. I want to be married to Vin Diesel. Then Shanna made the best Christian jet ski that was ever made. And God had so much fun in the water. Everyone who saw said, who's that little water bug? He <laughs> he. And it turned out, that's God. The end. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's true. Now, can anybody confirm that Fast and Furious 7 is coming out this upcoming summer? Tyler, I know you know. April, April 3rd? Now, that's earlier than I thought. So <laughs> we're going to have to start getting ready. Now, who's going? <laughs> now, I don't know if I'll actually go because movies cost money. But, um, but uh, so Paul Walker's in that, but he's dead. Um, <laughs> it's not funny, but it is a little bit. Now, that's, no, I'm sorry, because there, be, there might be family of Paul Walker in the house, and if so, that's actually, I do owe you an apology if that is actually true. But now, who here does actually like the Fast and Furious movies, though, like just a little bit, like in a way? Because I will raise my hand to that. Because I like when they play Danza Kuduro and they're, they're making barbe they're barbecuing. And I think, like, that is a great part of my life. That, like, it hasn't happened in my life, but it's like, I do love that. That that happened for somebody. Um, <clears throat> this story is, uh, <laughs> this story does, it's, I've never read this story live before. Shout out to you. Congratulations on your new life. Um, this one is called Twist My Poop Into a Fractal. Uh, once upon a time, Catherine was doing just fine. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> well, that was long time ago. Right now, <laughs> right now, <laughs> she is freaking hell out of here because she's got mole rats. Surprise, her home was taken over by mole rats. Ah, mole rats. That is an exact quote of Catherine. Every day of her life now. This is a hell that few could endure. Catherine actually can endure it, but she does not like to. It's hard. And what's the worst part? It's making her dislike mole rats. Catherine used to love mole rats. She was a champion of mole rat love. But as we all know, there does come a time in all our lives when your home, your place of work, or indeed your whole life becomes such a mole rat infested hell. You can't help but lose some of your overall enthusiasm for mole rats. It sucks, but this is our life. We are human beings. We are born. We have problems. We die. Rest in peace, Paul Walker, 1973 to 2013. Yeah. Yeah! Who likes the reverb, specifically? <laughs> Who doesn't? Who's mad? Who's mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore? <laughs> Who's ready to get up and shoot out the lights? Now, if there's a chandelier in here, who would shoot it down? Because I hate when they're in there. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read another new story that I like reading the new ones because they're new to me, and that makes me giggle sometimes while I'm reading them. And it brings more true energy to the performance. Um, I think the performance is part of the work, you know, uh, a lot of... Sometimes poets don't acknowledge this as enough, enough as they should. But then that means that I get worse at performing things the more times I perform them because I don't, have, I don't love it as genuinely because it's not as new to me. You know what I mean? But I do. It's okay. But this one is called Attack My Dad with a Bunch of Candles. 
There's a sick fuck named Glenn. <laughs> Glenn likes eating pulp from juicers. It's weird. I don't trust him. <laughs> Anyhow, Glenn has a problem. He loves the moon sexually, romantically, whatever. He wants to have it babies. Ooh. Glenn writes love letters to the moon all the time. They say, shine your hot ass light down on my broke ass. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm broke for you. Wow. Come on, Glenn. <laughs> Get it together. Are you serious? Anyway, one day Glenn's pals, Connor and Pippin, come over to play. They shoot at Glenn with BB guns, and he runs around saying, Don't! <laughs> it's their favorite game. At night, they sit around a fire, saying their deepest secrets on life. Pippin says, I have a pet baby. <laughs> I got a baby human that I use as a pet in my home. <laughs> wow. Unexpected. Kind of dark. Connor says, <laughs> Connor says, I love getting whacked with bamboo paddles on my neck. <laughs> Before anyone can fully react to that, a dead clown falls out of a passing helicopter <laughs> and lands very near to Glenn and Pippin. Ah! Glenn turns around and immediately says, I need to go buy tortilla chips now. <laughs> then suddenly, for unrelated reasons, a bison appears, charging directly at Glenn. Ah! Glenn shouts again. But then Pippin uses his wristwatch to stop time, saving Glenn. What? What? How? I don't know. I really don't know, but stay with me. This has to get resolved somehow. The end. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are in. Waxing gibbous moon phase. Who's fucking pumped for that? We got any people who think that that's their favorite moon phase? Hands in the air. Now, most people are going to, I'll straight up tell you, most people love the full moon. Who loves that moon phase the most? Yeah. Well, it's the obvious one to love. You need to think deeper. Think about it this way. The moon phase is a party at the end of the week. We've all been looking forward to it. We've all been jacked on this party. The full moon is when everybody loves the moon. The full moon is even, the moon is marked on the calendar. It's so visible. It's great, but... But what about the hours leading up to the party? What about the day before the party? What about the day of the party earlier in the day when you're getting, and when you're getting ready and it's like, yes, that's going to be great tonight. I love that. That's, that. that's coming. That's where we're at. Now, we're in the early waxing gebbis. We got a few more days. It's going to be March 5th as the full moon. So, but it... It pumps all the way up to 98% full pretty quick there. Now, I'm studying moon phases, and I'm going to learn more about this. Um, and it is debated whether you call a full moon full on just the one day when it is technically 100% full or whether you refer to it as full even when it's 98 99% full. Does anybody have a strong opinion on this? Because I've been, I, you know, one thing I hate, you know, a form of negativity that I think we don't need, honestly, is people shutting down other people who are celebrating the full moon by saying, you know, it's actually only 98% full. <laughs> now, it's been done by probably some of you in here. <laughs> and I have, actually, I have actually done it just because I like flaunting my moon knowledge. But I always do it in a, sp in a, good, in a spirit. I do it in some kind of spirit or other, and I think it's okay, but it's just something to think about. You know, you know, what are we here to do? You know, are we here to tear people down for liking that 98% full moon? You know, basically it is full, you know, basically it is full. And if we, and if we allow it to be full for these multiple days, you know, because it shoots right up to 98% full. I could, I, my phone's over there. I got a moon app. It sh tells you, if you got a, iPhone it has there's an app called Moon that does have it does show you the percentages and I'll tell you it whips up to 98% full and then it's hanging around 98 99 97 for you know quite a few days there you know we could have a whole you know we could have a 4 day long party about the full moon if people weren't so you know sticklers about it 
say if they weren't so pedantic about it. You know what I'm saying? It's just something to consider. You know? So I'm gonna read another new one that because I really like this. But what time is it? 710. Nice. Okay. This one. Who's ready? Who's excited? Now, who here likes lemurs, though? And who, if you don't like lemurs, say boo. Now, we see that there are many lemur lovers and no lemur haters in the building. So this is a very good night for me to read this story because I tell you, if there's lemur haters in here, I would be unsure about reading this. But we are in a lemur safe space. Thank God. This one is called Lemur Basics. But it also has whale content. Who here is into whales? Because you will hear some whale content. And actually there are whale facts. I hope that's okay. Um, quote, Whales seem very loving. I feel loved when I am around whales. That is what Vika had tattooed on her upper back. Vika has a great love for getting multiple full sentences as tattoos, especially on the subject of whales. Vika recently got the following whale fact tattooed on her leg. Whales love to sing. They love to use their songs as a call to mates, a way to communicate, and just for fun. After a period of time, they get bored of the same whale song and begin to sing a different tune. Wow. That's an amazing whale fact and an amazing tattoo. <laughs> Vika's friend Brendan is also pretty good at getting multiple sentence tattoos, although he focuses more on lemur-based material. This is what Brendan recently got as a chess piece tattoo. Lemurs do not have prehensile tails. Therefore, they cannot hang from their tails in trees like monkeys. However... They do have long, wet noses. Wow. I'm impressed. After Brendan got that tattoo, the next day he got a letter in the mail saying, you have won a Nobel Peace Prize. <clears throat> wow. And he got another letter saying, you won National Book Award, too. Oh, my God. Since when does that happen? National Book Prize? He didn't even write a book. And Peace Award, wow. Now that's the power of lemurs. Lemurs do have power. For once, lemurs seem to have power. This is great news. Oh, wow. Should I tell my parents? Hmm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You should tell your parents. You should tell them that lemurs are here and here to stay. No, no, tell them more. Tell them that lemurs are the basis of everything good in my life. Tell them that I am so glad to share this earth with lemurs, and I would die for lemurs. In fact, tell them I hope and crave to die in a way that benefits lemurs as soon as possible. Thank you. The end. Very rare. Um, should we do an encore should, where I go away and then come back? And the, I'll do like, I'll do a really long amount still. No, it, well, I'll do a medium amount. But we can do a double encore. We can do another later if you want. But it's been great. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, no, no, no. Shout, um, chant. Somebody start a chant. Uh, somebody start a chant like, one more poem. Wait, no, these are stories. No, just say, wh who has a good idea? I, I like one, one more, one more, one more. Just make some, just tell me to come back. Okay, okay, you convinced me to come back, and I love that. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> now, now, 
that was a pretty good idea. Um, this story is called, I Would Honestly Watch Kid Rock Jack Off. It doesn't even matter. Now, who here has thought that sentence? <laughs> I'm all alone on this one. No, we got a couple. Beach Sloth has thought it. Good job. Um, really great. Really, because actually I read that story in Chico, California. Anybody know of that rare city? Chico. We got some Chico knowers in the audience. <laughs> I went to Chico, California. I read in someone's true living room. It was truly rare. But, and there was a kid that played trumpet in the reading in a different part. And it was fantastic. But afterwards, somebody came up and they're like, you know, I really related to your reading, especially that part when you said that you would watch, a, that you would watch Kid Rock jack off. Cause, <laughs> and they said that they actually tried to download a sex tape that had Kid Rock, but also had Scott Stapp of Creed <laughs> in the same sex tape. And he, so he's like, I have actually thought about that. Um, but he was unable to get the sex tape of Scott Stapp and Kid Rock. So it's a sad story after all, but okay. That's a picture of my female cat sucking off her husband cat. It was something Benjamin's dentist said earlier that day. It didn't seem like a surprising sentence when he initially heard it, but later at home, eating non-GMO corn tortillas and watching XFL football reruns, he thought out loud, Hey, asshole, cats don't engage with the institution of marriage. Who's to say that those cats are married or even that they've entered into a monogamous or committed relationship at all? Suddenly, beautiful adult squirrels begin to fill the room, one by one, for a really long time, until there's exactly 3,000 squirrels in the room. Wow. They barely fit. The room had the exact amount of space required to fit 3,000 adult squirrels, who said there's no such thing as perfection. The end. Yeah. It's, it's important. This next one, wait, I'm going to go off the book. Um, if that's a, <laughs> it's off the book if I'm not reading from the book. Um, this one is called, this one is a very rare poem, but who here knows of the term weebolo? It's a rare Boy Scout terminology or, or, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your honesty, but it is rare. <laughs> now, we, I just unearthed this term recently, and it now actually, okay, it's not that rare, but it is, like, it is, it is a Boy Scout term, though. It is a term when you rise up because there's levels in Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts. You start with the Tiger Scout level. You ascend up to bear and wolf. Eventually, you arrive at we below. <laughs> now, for some reason, they made it uh, this made-up word rather than another animal. It's, it's really it's inspiring, is what it is. But we ha I have that's what the term is. But this is my poem about we belows. Your son attained the we below level of Boy Scouts. Cool. Fuck your Weebelow, son. The dark secret, the dark truth behind that poem might be that it was actually digging up my psychological past, you know, some deep stuff because I did start out with Tiger Scouts. I think I got up to somewhere in Bear or Wolf and I dropped out. So I actually didn't, I probably didn't attain we below. Or if I did, I did not get further. But I don't really remember anything about Boy Scouts. I think it probably was pretty useless. Um, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, this poem is called A Space Heater Would Have to Be Huge. Space Heater. <laughs> well, it's time to clean my dad, Renee says. Pouring the blood of a dead priest from a mason jar into a one-liter Voss water bottle in her kitchen. 
Renee's dad seems normal in almost all regards, but he has somehow convinced his family and close friends to take turns cleaning him with the blood of dead holy men. Also, Renee's dad is nicknamed the human car alarm because when people scare him, he makes loud car alarm sounds and it takes over five minutes to get him to stop. (laughs) Well, anyway... On this day, Renee approaches her dad, and Renee is wearing a monocle for some reason. Actually, there is no reason. I take that back. And she is holding the blood bottle. (laughs) Anyway, her dad is scared by the monocle, and Renee's dad starts making car alarm sounds very loudly. It's awkward. It seems really immature of him. But it's actually just a reaction, like an allergy. Nothing he can do about it. Well, Renee's mom walks in from the other room. She says, Dear God, Renee, what did you do now? To the human car alarm. Our dear father. All of a sudden, a dead clown falls out of the ceiling of their home. Onto the sofa next to Renee's dad. Everyone goes silent. There is a note in the dead clown's hand. Renee says, now what could that little note say? (laughs) She goes over to look at it. The note says, (laughs) hee hee. (laughs) Nothing else. The end. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Ah, there's so many good stories that I want to read to you. Can you believe it? Can you believe that such a book has been made as this one? Of course you can't, but suspend your disbelief for one moment as I enlighten you to the truth that, yes, it has been created. And I think God helped. I did not even credit God, but I do think so. Now, um, uh, okay, so I have this book. I will, I, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to tell you all the story about the, about the, um, about God Do you want to hear or not? (laughs) It's it's like it's pretty good, but it's not like quite as good as some of my other. Well, it's relevant though, and now I will tell it. But I'll try to tell it quickly. So I was in this past month. I did a lot of touring in January. I was uh, I was in the Kansas City bus station, the Greyhound. Now I hate taking Greyhound, but it, it is the cheapest, so I will take it usually. And um. And, uh, well, it's not actually the cheapest where there's Megabus and Bolt Bus, but, you know, in the other parts of the country, they don't have that. So, anyway, I'm, like, in there, and there's some people in there that are ticked off about Greyhound because their service is horrible. These people were in the Kansas City bus station, I believe, overnight into the next day, and they couldn't get on a bus to Denver, which they were supposed to get on, and it wasn't even because of weather. <laughs> it was like because they didn't assign the right amount of buses or something, you know. And so anyway, there was this problem, and these people are getting ticked off, rightly so. They, have the, uh, they can get ticked off. They have the license. They can do it. But, <clears throat> and they're like, this, uh, we deserve better than this. This is t- fricked up. But the one woman who was leading that, she said it to this other guy. She's like, this is fucked up, you know? And this guy, he's chilling out, and he says, you know what? I'll get there when I get there. And then he says this. He says, you know what? It's God's plan. And I just, I was like, now that is a really comforting worldview. And I was like, that's like, now you can't always have that outlook, Because the other people, for example, they were like, well, we got to get back to our, (laughs) like, we got to get back. Like, we got jobs. We have to, we have a shift that starts in two hours, you know. So it's understandable not everybody could have that outlook. And yet I was like, this guy somehow attained this outlook. And it's like, wow, it seems like it's going pretty good for him. No, because he's sitting there and he's like, he's just relaxing, you know. And so that's like, I'm like, well, some, you know, that's pretty cool, you know. So that's, some, that's something. But, um, okay, so anyway, 
this is my book. I do, uh, I'll just read one more thing from it, and it is, uh, is available for sale. I have 100 copies today, and I, I want to sell a lot of them um, because, uh, not only because, uh, because of stuff like money and not carrying the books home, but also because I genuinely believe this is the best book that I have made, and I'm very happy about it, and I want it to represent my work to more in more people's minds idea of who I am. I'm excited about this, and I want to get it to people. Um, and I know there was a cover charge today. Uh, shouts out to everybody for paying the cover charge who paid it. Um, shouts out to anybody who illegally sneaked in through the vents. And I know that there's been many great success stories with that tonight. And I hope to see them. I hope to see mo mo movies about it. But, um, okay, so this is the last thing I'm going to read. Um, yes! And, and who here, who, <laughs> and who here likes uh, to eat a lot, uh, like a, a decent amount of nuts, but like not so much that you are uh, like a very high fat content in your diet, but just like a decent amount. And that's what I'm talking about because you have to be aware that nuts are a great gift from the earth to us, but you know, they do have a very high fat content, but some people do, you know, it is a healthy fat. And so some people do believe this is good for human beings. So we don't know. But I do believe in the high carb diet. Uh, I do believe in keeping the, the fat somewhat low to, I burn the fruits and rice primarily with some beans in there. I shouldn't get in excited about getting the cheapest diet that, er, that I can get. And it's with beans and rice in bulk amounts, cooked from dry. And it's like less than a dollar a meal. And it's like, now it probably doesn't represent very good because I'm sick right now. But, but most of the time I'm in good health. So just think, stick that in your pipe and actually smoke it. And now earlier I was listening to a, a lot of Wiz Khalifa songs about smoking weed. And those are very good. I'd say. So listen up to that. This one is called, this one is called Calculating How Big of a Tip to Give is the Easiest Thing Ever. Shout out to my family and friends. John was 10 years old. Wow, young, lol. John was sitting in the bathtub. The tub was dry, and he was eating corn nuts off the floor. I don't know. Fuck off. How am I supposed to know everything about the story? It's John's life, not mine. Why don't you ask him? Anyway, I'm sorry. I am sad about the police, government, and military acting on behalf of the United States and the world. I disagree with almost everything they do, and I am worried about the ideologies which allow them to justify their actions to themselves. How did they get those ideas in their head, and what other actions could that kind of belief system justify? Now I'm worried about the ideology inside of my own head, too. I was taught from a young age. I was taught to be a man, for example, and I'm scared of how this is affecting my view of the world and humans. I have feelings about what is right and wrong in my head, and I don't trust them. I have feelings about what are my favorite things in the world, and I don't trust them. I learned everything from the previous humans and mostly from the white men who control the media and the schools and the church and the press. And do I really trust them? I don't. Do I really trust them? I don't. Do I really trust them? I don't. Thank you. 